I've got to be honest, when Algo Laser asked me to review their Delta Laser Engraver, I wasn't sure what to do. I'm a Blender guy, and I haven't seen anyone using Blender with a laser engraver. But then I had a brilliant idea, something I've not seen anyone do before. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the machine, what it can do and how we can use Blender to create some incredible engraving and cutting projects. Firstly, what is a laser engraver? Well, it's a machine which lets you cut or engrave materials such as paper, wood and acrylic in two dimensions. The laser moves across the X and Y axes at different speeds or powers to either engrave or cut through the material. This allows you to make a range of products including signs, coasters, key rings, jewellery and by stacking up cut layers you can even make 3D products. So this is the Algo Laser Delta. It comes mostly pre-assembled with clear instructions to put the last few bits together. Now, most laser cutters require a laptop or nearby computer to operate. But this machine also has a touchscreen which supports offline cutting and control without the need for a computer. This means you can engrave and batch cut without needing your laptop nearby. The engraver has some pre-installed files ready to engrave, so you can get it working straight away. Engraving is really fast with speeds up to 500 millimeters per second. The cutting beam is super accurate on the Algo laser, with a beam which focuses down to just 0.05 millimeters. It can also engrave colors on steel and cut materials up to the thickness of 30 millimeters. The engraver has its own 4-core CPU with a built-in 32GB SD card to store your offline files, whilst the built-in Wi-Fi allows you to upgrade the machine without the need for a computer. Safety glasses are included and these must be worn any time the machine is operated. This is the first time I've ever had a laser engraver, so I started by cutting cardboard before I progress onto wood or acrylic. The engraver cuts cardboard really quickly and accurately. And this has given me the idea of creating a cardboard diorama by designing in Blender and somehow cutting the 3D scene into slices which can be cut into cardboard and stuck and stacked. Let's hop into Blender and build a scene. So I've just built this uh, sort of file in Blender. It's fairly simple. We've got some text, we've got some extruded uh, SVG files, we've got a car. I think this was from Blender Kit. And I've just built a base. And we've got these sides that I've built uh, basically just out of a cube and I've just deleted one of the, the corner vertices um, to make this kind of slope side. You'll see why that's important in a, in a bit. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to import SVG files. You just go to File, Import SVG. Right, we can't see it at the minute. Let's just uh, grab it and S to scale. R to rotate X on the X axis and then 90. And all you do to this then, uh, we can delete the, the material and we just go to add a modifier. And basically if you just search for a solidify modifier, that will give the model thickness just like that, okay? And uh, similar with the, with the text file, we're just adding a blended text mesh, uh, rotating it on the X axis 90 degrees and the z-axis 180 degrees um, and we're just basically giving it geometry by extruding it just like that okay just delete that for now so the next thing we need to do basically is to make this instead of having separate parts we need to make it into one basically big giant mesh um, so we can slice it so what you can do on the SVG files you right click on them and you convert them to a mesh same with the, the people and the text. Then the next thing we do is uh, press Ctrl and J, that joins it into one mesh. Then what I usually do next is add a remesh modifier. And you basically just decrease the voxel count. Let's try point more one. You basically want a, a nice balance between sort of having good detail 
and having something that works as one mesh. Um, you can also see just a little, little point underneath the car I've actually also added some cube support so when it prints out that these parts don't float off but they're actually still attached to the base. Uh, there's also a really nice add-on actually built into Blender. If you go to edit preferences and go to add-ons, if you search for 3D hyphen print, um, you've got this 3D print toolbox here and just enable that. And then you can do things like, let's just apply this modifier. Uh, you can click on your mesh and then you click make manifold. And that basically will convert the mesh so there's no holes in the mesh so you can slice it nicely. And then we export the file as an STL file. So this is an app you might not have used before, it's called Kirimoto. Um, I basically found it while I was researching um, for this. Basically it's an online 3D slicer, which is great. So um, basically all you need to do first is go to import files. And we'll choose the laser curve. The next thing is a bit small, so you go to tools and then scale. And I basically scaled it up 20 times I think. And I also rotate it, so if you go to Tools Rotate, uh, I think it was on the x-axis, 90 degrees, that's it. So it lays flat on the bed. Now basically you have these um, tools to slice it, so if you go to your layers, you can actually choose your layer height for each slice. And then you basically just go to Start and Slice. And it basically slices your model up into... Um, as many slices as you need really. Um, obviously the more slices you have the more cutting and sticking you'll have to do but you'll get a more detailed mesh if you slice more times obviously. And then you can go to preview and this basically gives you a, a nice picture, an SVG file really of all your different slices laid out flat and then you just go to export and you can export it as an SVG file ready to import straight into Lightburn. Now we're just going to move the SVG files into Lightburn. Uh, Lightburn is the software that basically takes the outlines of the SVG files and lets you decide the speed and power you want the laser to cut each line with. Um, this lets you basically either engrave or actually cut out a design. So once we've got things placed in the right position we can actually burn them straight into the cardboard uh, with the laser engraver. This is quite a quick process. You can see the, um, the laser engraver cuts things out much more quickly than you would say on a 3D printer. So you get results really nice and fast. Now we've got the first sheet of cutouts done. It's very clean, very precise. You can see it exactly matches what we've got on screen here. Uh, now I've just got to get the other sheets cut out, ready to build it all together. So now all the cardboard pieces are cut out. I need to push them out of the cardboard and assemble them into order. Now you'll remember that I designed the scene with this little triangle shape at the edges. As I don't have order numbers engraved into each piece, you'll see that each piece has a different length of cardboard on each side. I can use this as a guide to work out the stacking order of the cardboard pieces. Once I've got everything in order, I can start to stick all the pieces together. I'm using a basic PVA adhesive to stick everything together, just applying it with a small brush. It's a bit messy, but it doesn't take me too long. After the glue has dried, the model has turned out really nicely. There's a lovely depth to it, and it's really got me excited for the possibilities that this laser engraver offers. Drop me a message in the comments if you've got any ideas for future things I could make with this laser engraver and blender. If you'd like to get one of these machines for yourself, then there's a link below to buy one. I'd just like to say a big thanks to Algo Laser for sending me this machine to try out. See you in the next one guys.